Hi, I'm Lou Walker. As a registered health coach, I help people transform their health using real food and realistic lifestyle changes. Whatever we're working on, diet is usually part of the discussion because what we eat affects every aspect of our health. To me, a real food, low carb approach makes sense because it's closer to the type of diet humans revolve to eat. So that means it promotes and protects health and heals. And, and this is the point of this video, it is adaptable to a whole range of health goals and dietary tolerances and preferences. Real food is unprocessed food as close as possible to its natural state. So fish, not fish fingers, tomatoes, not tomato ketchup. It gives us good quality protein and healthy fats from meat and fish, dairy, eggs, and oily plants like avocados, olives, nuts, and seeds. Our bodies are very happy using these fats for energy. So real food supplies great nutrition and energy in every mouthful. Where does low carb fit in? Our bodies work really hard to keep our blood sugar within a safe, narrow range. If our blood sugar is too high, too often, eventually we become metabolically ill with problems like overweight, type two diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. Low carb foods don't have a substantial effect on blood sugar. This might be because they don't contain much carbohydrate or because they don't contain much sugar or the type of carbohydrate, like starch, that rapidly digests down into sugar. Popular foods that form a large part of our Western diet, like pasta, bread, rice, and breakfast cereals, are not low carb. They're very high carb. They're not intrinsically bad themselves, but we eat them often and in large amounts and they eventually take their toll. It's true that some real foods like root, veg, whole grain and most fruits contain some sugar or starch, but other than honey, nature doesn't load food with pure sugar. Even our modern fruits have been bred to be sweeter and more fleshy with smaller seeds and thinner skin than they had in the wild. Around 70% of processed foods contain added sugar or starches, even the savoury ones. And in the UK, over half our food comes from processed food. So you can see that reducing processed foods and eating real food can dramatically reduce sugar intake and improve health for all of us. Some people would call this a low carb diet. I just call it a normal, real food diet. It's just that real food happens to be low carb. But for some people, a real food lifestyle doesn't give them the health benefits they're looking for. This might be because of a predisposition or metabolic ill health. So they might look to reduce their carbs a bit further. For example, if you have diabetes, your body doesn't tolerate carbohydrate well. So reducing them can prevent the diabetes from getting worse and help you get better. This might mean cutting out grains completely, so that's pasta bread, rice um, and flour, and it possibly means cutting down on starchy veg and most fruits. To give this approach a label, we might call this moderate to strict low carb, depending on how much you limit your carbohydrates. Then some people reduce their carbohydrates even further to the minimum, either through preference or because they find their blood sugars need even tighter control. We'd call this approach ketogenic or keto. So there's no agreed definition for low carb and no one size fits all. I think of it as a spectrum that goes from high carb, high sugar and processed food at one end to keto at the other. This chart isn't meant to be prescriptive in any way, but to illustrate low carbs flexibility and range. The high sugar processed end of the spectrum isn't healthy for anyone. And there's a stack of evidence to show this. But after that, how low you go depends on your current health goals, uh, your current health and your preferences. Finding the level that suits you might be a case of trial and error. Some people monitor their carb intake using an app in the early stages to get the hang of it, but it's not essential. If you already monitor blood sugar, you'll be able to see how different foods affect you. Otherwise, noticing how you feel, your hunger levels and your waist size are great indications of what's working. But wherever on the spectrum you start, you can feel reassured that moving away from the high carb, high sugar end is a move 
closer to health. And some of the positive changes can happen really quickly, within days sometimes. It's a huge topic, but if you'd like to know more, I've linked to some useful resources in the notes below, including some academic references. I love helping people discover real food low carb, and if it sounds like something that might be right for you, why don't you get in touch through my website and we can have a chat about it. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now I'm a health coach and I'm qualified in weight management and nutrition, but I'm not a doctor and it always makes sense to check with your GP before making any health changes. This is particularly important if you're on medication because reducing your carbohydrate can reduce your need for some medications, for example, for blood pressure and diabetes and your dosage might need adjusting. But hey, reducing medication, nice problem to have.